Uh, yes, Diko, we can start the session now. You can share your screen and make you the offer. All right. Well, hello, everyone. My name is Sergio Telkamp. I'm the Chief Marketing Officer of uh, Steinbeis SMI University in Germany. And I'm very happy to be here. And uh, thank you very much to the joining campus uh, team uh, for your time and for the invitation. The idea of the session today, what I'm going to do uh, together with my colleague, Anand Pijai, who is also here uh, joining me on this uh, training, is that we're going to give you a very good overview of uh, Steinbeis SMI University. What are the reasons uh, why a student should come to Germany, to Berlin? Why should they choose Steinbeis SMI? What do we, do we stand for, right? And we're going to talk a little bit also about our programs and the advantages that we offer your students, our admission process and the admission requirements uh, for the, the students. We'll have also time for questions and answers. And, and we will be happy to share this presentation also with uh, the whole joining team. So just, uh, we hope that uh, the information is useful for you. And if at any point you have questions, please let me know. I will share my screen now so that we can start the presentation. All right. I think you can see my screen at the moment, right? Uh, yes, we can. OK, perfect. So like I said, I'm here uh, representing Steinbeis University School of Management and Innovation. Uh, the idea right now is uh, to show you a little bit about our university and our programs and why uh, you see here this slogan that we are very committed uh, to, which is we help your students turn their dreams into career success in Germany. You will see in the next slides that we're very focused on career success. And the reason why is that over 86% of the students that come to Germany to study they mentioned that they want to stay afterwards, use their study, post-study work options uh, in order uh, to take advantage of the professional possibilities that they have here. So we make sure that they have the best uh, opportunities to take advantage of those facilities that Germany offers. Let's start talking a little bit about why Germany and why Berlin. Probably some of you already have had the experience of, of sending students to Germany, so you might be well aware about the current situation here. And it's that Germany offers several advantages. First of all, is that Germany is a very safe country. That's very important for the students, for the families. The second, I think, and one of the most attractive things is that Germany has a very, very strong economy. And this is a fantastic opportunity for international students, right? Because even with the COVID situation, with all the pandemic, Germany's economy has remained very strong and it has allowed a, a, the government to help, the, to help a lot of uh, businesses, to help a lot of people, to make sure that they could continue operating properly during the pandemic and even thriving because there are some sectors uh, here in Germany that are really growing a lot uh, since the pandemic, for example, the pharmaceutical sector, Everything related to electronics has been growing a lot. Uh, so there are some sectors that are really, really thriving under these conditions. And this is, of course, sectors that are still looking for talent uh, worldwide. One of the important things is that uh, we have a very generous post-study work visa. It's an 18-month work permit of graduation, right? And this allows the students that graduate from an accredited university like Steinbeis SMI to work in Germany for 18 months. This is really important because right now, last week, our the Vice Chancellor of Germany, Robert Habeck, who is also the ministry, the Minister of Economic Affairs, he was mentioning that uh, there is a need for 300,000 extra talented employees that Germany cannot cover. And he expects that the number in the next months will rise up to 1 million uh, jobs that are not being filled because we don't have enough people to work, right? So this is a, represents a huge opportunity for international students that come with the right qualification, that do the right uh, program here in Germany with Steinbeis SMI, and then they can continue to take advantage of all these job opportunities that we have. Like I said, over 1 million jobs that are not being filled uh, in Germany 
uh, because there is not enough talent. So that's talent that they want to get worldwide. And also we received uh, recently last week another very important news, which is that uh, the European Union blue card, which requires 56,000 euros to be granted. This is a blue card that allows you uh, to be have a permanent uh, residency here in, in Germany and also work in the European Union, uh, across all the European Union. They have reduced the salary that you need to have in order to acquire it. It used to be over 56,000 euros. Now it's going to be around 44,000 euros. So this is also a very strong signaling that uh, Germany is open to more international talent. We are located in Berlin. And one of the reasons is that uh, it's a very multicultural uh, city. It's uh, the capital of Germany. Uh, there are a lot of people here speaking in English. It's uh, probably the city where you can have an easier uh, adaptation process when you come to Germany. And that's why this is a city where we offer our international programs. And it has a lot of uh, cultural and entertainment offer, something for everyone here. And most important, it has become the startup capital. This means that every year, more and more startups are being founded in Berlin. What is the advantage of this? Well, most startups are very flexible, are very, they're demanding a, a good profiles. They demand people that speak English, right? They're usually, most of startups, their standard language is English, not German. So that makes a, for international students also a big opportunity. Why Steinbeck SMI? Well, I'm going to focus on five uh, reasons on why Steinbeck SMI is the right university choice for anyone that wants to study something in the areas of business or engineering, right? Let me start with the first reason. The first one is heritage. We have been around for many years. Steinbeck University is part of the Steinbeck Foundation, which has been around in Germany for 150 years. This means that the Steinbeck Foundation and the Steinbeck name is very well known across the country. It's known by companies, it's known by people, uh, because our founder, Ferdinand von Steinbeck, which is the gentleman you see here uh, on the screen, uh, he lived in the 19th century already, and he was the founder uh, and the inventor of the dual education system in Germany, right? Which basically is about applying the theory that you learn at the university, apply it to the companies, right? So this is something that is part of the Steinbeck's mission, uh, which is to equip our students with skills that they can use for the job market, right? So we are not a theory-oriented uh, uh, university. We are a university that it has the experience of putting theory into practice. And for 150 years, we have been around in Germany. This is a huge difference in comparison to uh, small-time universities that have been created maybe three years ago, five years ago, 10 years ago, uh, whose name is not yet so well known around the country. So there is a huge advantage on this. The second important point is something we call the SMI Launchpad. What is the SMI Launchpad? It's simply the best career readiness program from day one. What does this mean exactly? Pretty much all universities, they offer a career service program, right? Usually those career services start before you graduate, right? When you're in the last semester of the master degree, when you're about to finish, then they say, hey, come by, give us your CV, we'll review it, we'll give you a couple of tips, and off you go to find a job by yourself in Germany. We know this is not enough, right? It's not enough only to have a German diploma in order to find a job in Germany. You need to understand the German job market. You need to understand what companies require from talent. You need to understand what human resources departments are looking for. How do they look for talent? Where do they look for talent? Because LinkedIn, which is what most people use nowadays worldwide, is not the main uh, job search platform in Germany, right? We have many other. We have some job search platforms that are very specific to specific industries. We even have regional ones. So depending on whether you want to work in Berlin or if you want to work in, in Baden-Württemberg, in München or in Hamburg, there are some different job search platforms. So it's not easy to understand the job market and that's why for us, it's very important to have this program that starts at the same time that your, uh, that your studies start, right? So from the first week on, 
You will be learning about personal branding. You will be learning about German cultural codes. You will be learning about how to adapt your CV, your profile on LinkedIn, your profile on Sing to the German requirements and how to present yourself better towards German companies, right? What to say, what are they expecting from you, right? How to negotiate your salary? What kind of contracts exist in Germany? This is something that takes time to understand. That's why it's not enough that most universities say, right before you graduate, hey, we'll give you some information and that's it. We know this takes time. That's why we start at the same time that you study start and there is no extra cost for this program. This is a complete free of charge program uh, that we give for students because we're focused on their career success. The third reason of Steinbeis SMI is that we have the right programs in business and engineering. Why business and engineering? Because these are the two areas that we know that offer the highest possibility for international students to get a good job in Germany, right? And these are areas where a lot of companies are willing to accept people that do not speak German on a native level language, as a native level language, right? And all the programs we have are German state approved, are FIBA accredited. That means this allows you to stay afterwards, the, those 18 months after your studies to work full time in Germany. That's very important. All the programs we offer you are fully taught in English. That means you do not need to speak German to come to us. That's also a huge advantage. And all the programs, like I mentioned at the beginning, we're very focused on, on transfer. We're focusing on transferring the skills that you learn at the university to the companies. That's why we use project-based learning to what we call our transfer projects, which are very famous already here in Germany. And of course, we have uh, up-to-date curriculum and fantastic professors on each of those programs that guarantee that the students will be competitive in the job market once they graduate. We've been around uh, for a long time here in Germany, like I said in the beginning. Uh, this means uh, that we have a lot of connections with several companies. Uh, we have over 200 industry partners that we work with. This means that either uh, they send us professors that are part of our, of our faculty, either we have alumni working with them, either we have a, a transfer projects that we do together with them. And in any case, what's really important is that all those companies here in Germany, they know the Steinbeis name, they know the Steinbeis quality. That means that when they have an applicant that comes with the Steinbeis diploma, they know, okay, this is a good university. This is not a university that was created five years ago that nobody knows about. So the Steinbeis name is very well known by all these industry partners, and this is an advantage to the students. Finally, as the fifth reason, and uh, this is an optional uh, possibility that we give our students if they want to enhance their study experience and their international perspective. Steinbeis SMI has some very good agreements with top business schools around the world, right? We, right now, we have a, a very good agreement with the SDA Bocconi, which is one of the top business schools in Europe, located in Milan, in Italy. We also uh, conduct uh, uh, several activities in, in, during the year with NYU Stern, uh, which is one of the top business schools worldwide located in New York. And we work and cooperate also with Kaos Pilot, which is a very interesting business school in Denmark, which is focused on entrepreneurship. What's the benefit for the international students? Well, international students that want to go to these universities, to these business schools, and do a one, a one or two week, a, we usually have one to two week program cooperations with them, they can do it, right? It's optional, it's not mandatory. It's just if you want to have the experience of going two weeks to Milan, to Desde Abocconi, learn with the professors, do a program with them for two weeks, and then you get your certificate from Bocconi, uh, you can do that, right? It has an extra cost, but I think the affordability is very high because the costs oscillate between 900 euros to 3,000, depending on the program. And it gives you a definite uh, advantage afterwards because then you get an extra certificate that you can add to your LinkedIn profile, to your CV, and it gives you an extra uh, international perspective that you can use and that you can brag about when you go into the, into the interviews uh, for your job. So definitely also a very good opportunity, these top university partners that we have and the quality of the university partners also tell you 
that uh, the quality of time by SSMI is very good because otherwise they would not be working with us. I don't know if you have any questions up until now. Otherwise, uh, Digo, we can have yeah. the question and answer session at the end. All right, perfect. Okay. Yeah, thank you. Yeah. So let's talk a little bit about the location uh, where we are because this is also very important. This is our Berlin campus right here in the bottom uh, left corner. You see our building and you will see some uh, water there. And that's because we are right by the river, right? Uh, our campus is located at the Charlottenburg district in Berlin. A very nice district, a lot of cafes, uh, restaurants, etc. that where, you, where you, the students can go have lunch, have some breakfast. And uh, best of all, something that also our colleagues like to do, have a coffee right by the river, enjoy the view, right? Uh, connection is very important. Uh, our campus is located only 14 minutes away from the Berlin Central Station. If you see here on the Google Maps, uh, you see our logo here in, in orange. That's where we are located. You can see also here the Google uh, pin, Steinbeck University uh, School of Management. And uh, on the right side of the, of the map, you will see the Brandenburger Gate, uh, which is very famous. You see the Tiergarten. And on top of that, uh, you see here uh, the Berlin Hauptbahnhof, which is the Berlin Central Station. From the Berlin Central Station to Steinbeck University, you take a bus, which leaves every seven minutes. You have a bus uh, going to our university, and it takes you only 14 minutes to get there. So very good location. We're very well connected with public transport. Also important to know is uh, uh, the number of students that we have. We have around uh, 22,000 alumni uh, worldwide that uh, make up the network of our graduates. And uh, they are the ones who are using the skills around the world. Uh, sorry if I, I'm going to move myself a little bit because we have an unusually sunny day today. And uh, now it's coming through the windows, uh, which is very nice for us, but it's not the best for the presentation. Uh, so 22,000 alumni on our network. Uh, we have 98% uh, recommendation rate with our current students. That means they would recommend the time by to other students, which is very good. And we have around 9,000 current students uh, in our campuses in Germany uh, all over. Okay. <clears throat> Let's talk a little bit about our programs. We, like I mentioned, we focus on business and we focus on engineering. And here we have, let's say, five programs with different specializations that you can take. The first program is the bachelor program. I'm going to go kind of gloss over it uh, as, uh, relatively quick because due to the admission regulations of the Berlin state where we are accredited, the admission here requires uh, that the students have an IB diploma, right? So I'll talk a little bit more in depth about that, uh, but uh, let me explain the programs that we have. We have the Bachelor of Arts in Business Administration. We have two master degrees with different specializations in business management and also our MBA. And we have two fantastic masters in the area of engineering and I will start talking more in detail about them. Like I said, the Bachelor in Business Administration is a very good bachelor program. It's a three-year program, very complete, gives you all the information you need, all the basics of business, and allows you to choose among four different specializations like management and innovation, digital management and digital innovation, which is in high demand, also general international management and marketing management and communication. The main issue here, and uh, the, uh, the reason that I usually don't uh, spend too much time on this one, is because for international students, the admission is only possible if they have done an IB diploma, if they come from a European Union high school, right? So for example, if they, done, uh, they went to a French high school and they got the back, or they went to a German high school and they got the, the Abitur, right? So it's a bit more complex. We're trying to change this uh, by the end of the year, but it, it will still take some time. So let us focus on the master degree programs where they, I think these programs are the ones that offer the better opportunities for your potential customers and our potential students. So first, the Master of Science in Business Management, right? This program is the ideal program for anyone that is a recent graduate or that have just uh, finished a few uh, finish their bachelor and they don't have maybe a lot of experience, right? 
it's open to anyone that has finished a bachelor, right? So it's not only for people that have studied business. We also have people that, for example, studied engineering or people that studied architecture or design or communication, and they want to go more in depth into the business area, right? So as long as they have a three-year accredited bachelor program, uh, then we are allowed to accept them. You can also choose from five different specializations uh, that you can see here, data and business analytics, management and innovation, digital innovation and business transformation, strategic marketing management, and digital media and online management. <clears throat> and I'm going to focus a little bit in two of those specializations. The first one is data and business analytics. This is a relatively new specialization that we offer. And uh, we launched this specialization because there is currently a very high demand uh, for uh, specialists in business analytics and specialists in data analytics in Germany, right? There are a lot of jobs and not enough people to work on this. So if you have anyone that likes numbers, that likes statistics, for example, people also that have studied natural science, right? If you have studied uh, biology, if you have studied psychology, if you have studied economics, if you studied engineering, right, or business administration, of course, right, then this specialization can be ideally suited for you. And the advantage is that it has a very, very high employability opportunity. The second specialization that is also in very high demand is digital innovation and business transformation. A lot of German companies are very big companies. They're very successful but they still work in a very analog way. So they're not digitalized, they're not modern. They're looking for people that can help them in this transition from the analog world to the, the digitalized world, right? And it's not easy for them to find, right? So this uh, search for talent is going on. And this is the uh, specialization from uh, the German students that we have. This is the highest demanded specialization that we offer, digital innovation and business transformation. So also a very good opportunity for international students because these two specializations also have the characteristic that uh, when companies are hiring for data and business analytics or when they're hiring for uh, digital innovation, language is secondary, right? So yes, it helps if you know a little bit of German, but they will mostly be concerned if you're a good business analyst, if you're a good data analyst, if you know about digitalization, then you have a high chance of uh, being hired. The master is a two-year program, uh, 120 ECTS. The tuition fee is 5,700 euro per semester. And our next intake is April. So we hope to start getting some students from you for the April intake, which starts on the 19th of April. Let's move on to the MBA. The MBA has a completely different student profile than the Master in Business Management. The MBA is uh, open to people that already have at least two years of management experience, right? Here, we're looking for candidates that can bring an added value to the classroom. So people that already have experience leading teams, people that already have experience, for example, handling budgets, handling a business, uh, leading projects, et cetera, right? So this is, a, a, this is the perfect program for that kind of, of profile. It's also open to any type of background from the bachelor. We know, for example, that we, there are people that study law, but in the end, they start working at a company at a managerial level, and then they want to have an MBA to cover the lack of knowledge they have in the business part. Also, the same with engineers, engineers that rise up through the ranks, and then they need more information about how does it mean to handle the financials? How does it mean to be a leader? How does it mean to handle people, right? So this MBA program is open to anyone with a three-year, at least a three-year uh, bachelor program then from an accredited university. And of course, what is really important is that they bring, to get, they bring with them a two-year of management experience, right? It's a three-semester program, 90 ECTS, 8,600 euros per semester, and uh, it brings you up to a very good level in terms of being an executive. Let's talk a little bit about our master degrees in engineering. We have first the master of science in engineering, which is one that is also highly demanded. As you uh, know, Germany is a nation that a lot of companies are engineering companies, technology companies, they are industrial production companies. 
the, the, the demand for engineers is extremely high. I think there is no unemploy, uh, uh, unemployability rate uh, among engineers. I think they're all employed 100%. And the big issue is trying to find uh, someone. I know also from a, a, a personal experience, my brother is an engineer. Uh, he's always looking for people for his team. It's really hard to find engineers, right? So any engineers that you have that want to come to Germany, even if they're recent graduates, this program is ideal for them because it gives you a very good overview in what it's called Industry 4.0, right? Or 4.0. What does this mean? 4.0 is the new industrial revolution, right? This is, has everything to do between the relation of internet, how things communicate with each other uh, through the internet, how systems communicate with things, right? And all about cyber physical production systems and processes, right? So you're gonna be learning here a lot about digitalization of processes, digitalization of factories, smart factories, a lot about robotics. You will learn here a lot about uh, also data interaction between different systems, data interaction at factories, data interaction among companies, right? You will learn about automatization, about vir virtual and augmented reality, right? And uh, you will also learn about digital business models and how uh, digitalization can help companies integrate uh, their value chains, both horizontally and vertically, right? This program is open only for engineers and it's open only to computer scientists. So if you don't have a bachelor in engineering, if you don't have a bachelor in computer science eh, or a software developer or software engineering, unfortunately, we cannot accept you. However, for these profiles, engineers, computer scientists, software developers, software engineers, eh, this program is ideal for them, right? This program really eh, brings together uh, all the engineering part that you need to know nowadays in order to be relevant uh, for the German companies, right? So it's a lot of engineering, but digital engineering. We're not talking here about construction. We're not talking here about building machines. We're talking here about all the interaction in terms of building a smart factory, how robotics work, how to set up a, a proper system to make sure everything works, uh, the internet of things, which is something very, very useful and cyber physical production systems. We, you also have the possibility to have some optional modules into creative thinking, agile project management, problem solving, and communication. Right? It's a four semester program, two years, uh, only 6,450 euro per semester, and this is not counting the scholarship. So it's also pretty affordable, and the salaries uh, for engineers, once they graduate, they're pretty high. They're one of the highest in Germany. So very good program to have if you want to work here as an engineer or as a computer scientist. Then we go on to the Master of Business Engineering. This is a, a master degree that uh, it's re requires some experience, right? I mean, for the Master of Business Engineering, we're looking for engineers. We're looking for computer scientists as well, software developers that have at least one year of experience. There is an, another advantage of this program. This program is also open to people that have done a, a bachelor in business administration, right? So if you have done a bachelor in business administration, three-year bachelor, and you think, okay, I want to go into the engineering side, I want to learn more about production, then you can apply to this program as long as you have a one-year work experience. It can be a one-year work experience in anything. I mean, it can be a one-year work experience as a, a business assistant, as a product manager, as an assistant engineer, as a computer developer, et cetera. Uh, but we need that, it, that proof of one year experience. The advantage here, you can choose among two specializations. One is technology management. The other one is, again, Industry 4.0. And again, you hear Industry 4.0 because this is what's really being demanded right now in Germany and the Internet of Things engineering. The MBE combines the fundamentals of business with the fundamentals in engineering and adds these specializations on technology management and industry 4.0. What is the advantage of this? It gives you the highest possible career prospects that you can have with any program because you're going to be an engineer that understands the business or you're going to be someone from business administration, business management that understands the engineering and the technological part. 
So it covers all aspects of business and engineering, which is what has made the German economy so resilient and worked so well in the past years. It's a two-year program, 120 ECTS, and the price is the same as the previous master engineering program, 6,450 euro per semester. And uh, this is not counting the scholarship, which can be reduced. So very good program, open to engineers, computer scientists, and business administrators. What happens if you're not in Germany at the moment? If your visa gets delayed? If uh, you say, oh, I wanted to start in April, but uh, I'm still waiting for the visa, or it takes me one more month or three more months or whatever. No problem. The first semester you can do online if you want, right? We would rather have you in Germany because we know the experience is much better. But if uh, we're flexible on that part, and uh, also with the pandemic, we have to be. So that means that you can do the first semester in Germany, then you come for the second semester, starting the second semester. It does not affect uh, the 18 month work permit after graduation. You can still work in Germany afterwards, right? You can study from, from your house. And the advantage is in, on that first semester, you pay only 50% of the tuition fees. What are the admission requirements? Uh, <clears throat> let's talk about the most general one. It's English, right? We need proof of proper English, right? That means that we require either an IELTS, TOEFL, Duolingo, PTE, Cambridge. We accept most of the standardized tests, right? Uh, right now, we see a lot of people using Duolingo because of uh, it's very easy. You can do it digitally, online. It takes two days to, to do and get the results. And uh, they also have some very good practice that is uh, free of charge. And, uh, and then it costs only, I think, $49. So it's very affordable. So we recommend all the applicants to do this. It will not only help you for the admission to the university, but it's also something that you can do, use afterwards when you're applying for a job in Germany and you want to show, hey, I, I'm a proficient in English, right? Uh, we will also check your English during the admission interview. That's gonna be also important besides the, the test result we want to check during the admission interview if you're able to communicate properly, if you can share your thoughts in a, in a logical manner, if you understand our questions, if you're able to uh, make questions uh, uh, by yourself, et cetera. Regarding the academics, as I said, for the bachelor program, the access uh, requires an IB diploma or a high school from a European Union system. And for the master degrees, what we require is at least a three-year a three-year bachelor program uh, depending on on the master degree that you're applying to if it's a master of engineering then you need to be an engineer or a computer scientist and if the master of business engineering then you need to be engineer computer scientist or business administrator for the master of science in business management and for the mba any three-year or four-year bachelor program qualifies you to do these master degrees Finally, regarding work experience, the only programs that require work experience are the MBA and the MBE, the Master of Business Engineering. The MBA requires two years of managerial experience and the MBE requires one year of work experience. Does not need to be managerial, just work experience after you graduated from your bachelor. What is the admission process? How does it work? I know this is very important for students and also for uh, our agents, our partners, because they don't want to be waiting for weeks and weeks or even months uh, to hear back from the university. We're very quick on that. We pay a lot of attention on that because we don't want to waste your time. We don't want to waste the students' time and we don't want to waste our time. So as long as you send us all the documents from the students, especially the degree, the transcript of records and the, and the English level, then we can review them. It will take us around a maximum two uh, working days to do this, so 48 hours. So as soon as we get the documents, within 48 hours, you and the students know whether uh, you can continue the admission process, right? If everything is okay, we will invite the student to an admission interview. Uh, and uh, we'll, of course, every communication that we do with the student, uh, you will be in copy, right? So you know what is the status. And once the admission interview is conducted, if everything works well, if the student is clear on what he wants to do, uh, if the student knows, okay, I'm 
uh, uh, I'm motivated. If, the, if we can see that the, they also speak very good English, then they will receive uh, within a week an offer letter. And this, so by now the process is only one week, right? So that's very quick. And then you have the opportunity to pay the deposit. The deposit is an advanced payment on the first year tuition plus the immatriculation fee, which is 500 euros, right? Usually the deposit is 5,000 euros in total, which encompasses 500 from the matriculation plus 4,500 for the tuition fee. So it's not extra money uh, on top of the cost of the program. This is money that will be deducted from the tuition fees of the first semester. As soon as the deposit is paid, two things happen. The student gets invited uh, to a visa interview preparation where we give them some tips into what they, how they have to communicate in the German embassy or the German consulate to make sure that they get the visa, to make sure that they transmit, that they're motivated uh, to study with us and why are they coming to Germany? Why do they come to Steinbeis? And they will also receive from our side the admission letter and the contract. Those are the documents they will need in order to acquire the visa afterwards. So it's a very quick process. Uh, it can take only maybe one week or less, depending on uh, if the documents are available and if the student is available for the interview. So very quick system uh, all in all. What are the important documents to share? Well, the degree certificate, very important, with officially notarized translations to English. The transcripts or the mark sheets where we see, okay, what grades do they have? Do they have the necessary credits, et cetera? and the English proficiency certificate. The other documents you can send along, uh, uh, maybe a, a day later, whatever, if they don't have a photo, then they can make a photo and then send it later. And the work experience is important also for the MBA and the MBE, right? Then we will also require the CV, we will require a copy of the passport, and, uh, and with that, that's all we need in order to proceed with the admission process. You will see here, and you will receive it also, in the, uh, uh, with this presentation. Uh, here you have a link to the full application online. So you can upload all the documents there and give the information. That's something that the student can do uh, or you can help the student do, right? So that we receive it immediately. As soon as we have it, the admission process starts. And for each applicant, please make sure that you send us an email to partnerships at steinbessmi.de uh, to make sure that we, under, we know, okay, this student comes from joining campus and that we uh, are able to keep you in the loop. We're regarding contact. What happens if you have questions? We're very, very simple. We have, a, we have an email that is partnerships at steinbeis-smi.de. You can always reach us there. Uh, the whole team has access to this email, so someone will be in contact with you very quickly. You can also visit our website, <clears throat> steinbeis-smi.com. And here's, again, the application link that you can use for anything you need. <coughs> you can also join uh, the social media uh, channels that we have. Uh, <clears throat> we regularly invite people there for webinars. We send information, etc. And Finally, it's a time for the Q&A right on time. So any questions you have, I would be happy to answer them. Any questions? Uh, Digo, they have the, you know, questions in the chat box because uh, they all are muted. So they can write their queries in the chat box. Ah, okay. So you Perfect. can answer yeah. I all see, of I them. see one. Yeah. What is the application fee? There is no application fee. Uh, you can apply without paying anything. So we will ha be happy to receive the application. We will review the documents and then we'll get back to you and tell you, yeah, the student can be, can, can continue the application process or not so <clears throat> but there's no application fee the only fees that will be charged are the tuition fees and the immatriculation fee however if you pay the deposit uh, within the two weeks uh, of receiving the offer letter 
we will deduct the immatriculation fee. That means that you will save 500 euros on that, and you will only have to pay the advance of the first semester tuition fee. And someone says that they sounds great, but they have a problem in Cameroon with students. Uh, I don't know what problem that is, but if they can clarify, then I will be happy to answer. Um, <clears throat> Permanent residency pathway after studies. Yes, there is a pathway after, uh, that you can uh, uh, go through uh, for permanent residency. First, you have the 18 month post study work visa. That means that you have one year and a half to get a job, right? Uh, it needs to be a job related to the program you studied. So if you did a master's in engineering, then it needs to be uh, something uh, that is related to that. If it's a, a, a master's in, in management, then it needs to be related to management, right? So this year and a half, you have the possibility to work and be here in Germany. You ha will have a residence permit. What happens after the year and a half? It's important that you have a, a work contract, right? If you have a work contract, then you can extend the residence permit. If you have a work contract that pays you more than 44,000 euros, then you can apply for the European Union blue card, right? If you don't get that level, if you get less than that, you can still apply for a normal residence permit, right? And uh, after around three years of having a permanent working uh, visa, then you can apply for permanent residency in Germany, right? So uh, like I said, Germany is eager to have more people here to work because we're missing a lot of labor, we're missing a lot of talent and the government is trying to make it as easy as possible. So there's definitely a path to that. A bachelor appointment available in German embassy, that's something that you need to uh, clarify in the country that you're working with. Right now, uh, <clears throat> right now, I mean, we're, we're receiving uh, deposits, we're receiving uh, visas, so we have not seen any issue, but of course it depends on the country that you're talking about. And for the master program, we have zero issues so far. And then I have something that says the German embassy does not call up students after they have paid their tuition. It takes too long. <clears throat> well, the first thing that you have to do is get first a visa appointment, right? When you And then you get the visa appointment, you show them that you have paid already the deposit, right? And once you once you go and meet with the with the with the embassy, then they will give an answer, right? It depends on the country that you are talking about. Some embassies in some countries take longer. I've seen some giving an answer in four to six weeks. Others give an answer even in six months. Depends on the country of origin. Uh, I think that depending on the country, I'm sure that you know what is the timeline usually, and you need to act accordingly to that, right? By when can the students apply for a permanent residency? Well, usually after three years of permanent work, right? So the first year and a half, no problem. It's almost automatic. You just show that you finish your studies here in Germany at an accredited university. You get immediately the one year and a half extra to live here. And as soon as you get a job, then you can extend that, that permit uh, for as long as you have this, uh, this working permit. And uh, then after three years, usually you can apply already for a residence permit, right? So it goes relatively quick. Uh, the important thing is, of course, to get a job that we we're, we're so focused on career success. I don't know if there are any other questions here. Uh, does the school provide lodging facilities in German language course? Okay, very, very good questions here. Uh, Lodging facilities, we do not have uh, our own accommodation. We do provide the students with a list of uh, uh, possibilities that they can choose, right? What we recommend the students is to start looking for accommodation as soon as possible. Because in Berlin, you find always accommodation. It's a question of how much will it cost, right? Then the, the sooner you start looking for accommodation, the better prices you get, especially when you're talking about the October intake. The October intake is the biggest intake in Berlin and in Germany in general. Right. So if you wait until September to look for a place for a living quarters in, in October, you will find them, but they're going to be expensive. They're going to be around 800 to 900 euros. But if you do it with enough time, maybe three months before or whatever, then you will be paying around 450 euro, which is the, usually the average that you pay for monthly uh, accommodation in Berlin. 
Uh, so there are a lot of options, but uh, the student needs to look for them on time. <clears throat> German language course. We also have several suppliers that offer German language courses. We used to offer directly German language courses. We stopped doing that because they were for free and the students would not come. So we were paying for teachers that were not having any students because a lot of students didn't want to come because they didn't, since they were not paying, they were, didn't value that, that advantage. And some of them also in reality, some people prefer to study by themselves one-on-one. -on -one. Some people prefer to study online. Some people like to do in groups and they have different le language levels. So what we do right now is we have a list of uh, uh, German language uh, courses that we can offer and the students are welcome to apply for them. They have an extra cost, of course, but then they can decide. I mean, either they do free courses online, which we can recommend also some of them, uh, or they can go into one-on-one -on -one teaching with an uh, individual professor or they can go into a group course. So there are a lot of options uh, also in Berlin to start signing this from the free ones to the more expensive ones. Bank deposit you need to do, that's mandatory. There's no other way around. We work with a, a very good company called Expatrio. And this information is also in, uh, on our, on our uh, presentation that I'm gonna share with you, right? But let me share here quickly on the, on the <clears throat> chat, the website of Expatrio. Because they offer not only the block account, but they also offer the health insurance. And I think they have one of the best health insurances for international students, with it, which is Technica Krankenkasse, TK. And uh, TK uh, offers all the services in English, so it makes it very easy for international students in case they need a doctor or they need anything, they can communicate with TK very quickly. So Expatrio would be the best way to go for. We have also another <clears throat> question here. What is the examination system, midterm tests, assignments before the final exams? Okay, interesting question. Basically, we work in blocks, right? So during one semester, you have several blocks and then the, uh, there's one block where you will be focusing on one or two modules. And then at the end of that block, you present uh, the exam, right? Then you continue with the, other two, uh, with the other two modules and then you do the exam, right? This makes it very easy because you can focus uh, on, a, on a, a lower number of modules at each time. So that usually uh, has a higher success rate because the other option would be to do at the same time, let's say six modules per semester and then wait until the end of the semester and do the examination for all of them. That's usually the normal way here in Germany. However, we have seen that it's better if we give first two modules, we test them, Another two modules, we test them, and another two modules, and then we test them, right? So <clears throat> it's, uh, it's uh, much better for the success of the students. Any other questions there? Also, something important that uh, uh, I would like to share, them in, and I have it here also in the presentation as an addition, uh, which is if we offer scholarships, right? We do offer scholarships, and this is an advantage of us being part of the Steinbess Foundation. We offer scholarships of up to 25% uh, deduction for the, whole, for the whole program, right? So if a student is assigned the 25% scholarship, that gets deducted from the complete program, right? And uh, also, uh, the, the other thing that it's important for you to know is that the, the scholarship does not affect your commission. So we still pay the same commission because we like to offer scholarships to good students. We want to motivate you to uh, send us uh, good students. And uh, therefore, we do not reduce the commission if we assign a scholarship to one of them. So can you please share this uh, webinar with us? I think you're. I think this is being recorded, so I guess uh, Mali, you will uh, receive it, and uh, I will also send you uh, this presentation that we just did, so you can also have it. Uh, how do we get visa appointment dates for students from Nigeria? Does the school help with this? No, we do not help with visa appointments. That is something that the student needs to do by contacting uh, and with the help of the agent by contacting the embassy. 
we know Nigeria is very difficult. Nigeria takes a long time uh, to get the visa appointment. Sometimes it takes six months and sometimes a little bit longer. Uh, but this is something that it's completely up uh, to the student. There is no university that will help you to do this. The student needs to contact the embassy, needs to say, I want to have the visa appointment or the agency, the agents also help in order to do this. And uh, another question regarding scholarships, what I mentioned, 25% uh, of scholarship uh, for all the programs are available. There is not a university rank in Germany uh, for, uh, for what is called Fachhochschulen, right? Uh, you have accredited universities and you have non-accredited universities, right? But there is not a specific rank. This is, this, this, that's a very American system. Uh, in Germany, what you have is something called the uh, uh, Hochschule Rector Conference, which is, of course, a very complicated German word, uh, very long, like we have here. And basically, there's a list of which universities are recognized and accredited, but they, it, it's, there's not no rank between that. Between that, so that's something that uh, that it's more relevant in other countries, but not in the case of Germany. I think in Germany, what is really important is is the university well known? Does it have a good uh, reputation? Is it only an online university uh, which does doesn't have such a good reputation? Or is it an on-campus university, uh, which is, are better uh, placed uh, among companies? And like I said, Steinbeis being part of the Steinbeis Foundation that has been around for 150 years. People know us, companies know us, and we have students from very good companies. We have teachers from very good companies. So uh, that's a huge advantage. That's even better than any German RAM, uh, which doesn't exist anyway. What is the class size? It is a small class or big lectures. <clears throat> it's usually small classes. We have around, depending on the program or the specialization, you have anywhere between 12 students up to 18 students, right? And this is a big advantage. This is the way we like it. Again, we are part of a foundation. We are not a, a university that is looking to have 50,000 students and then packing the classrooms with uh, 100 students or 200 students, that's not the case. Uh, so usually the, the, the number of students on each class is relatively low. And this allows you for a much better interaction with uh, the professors, especially because they are the ones who also have a lot of network that you want to uh, use and also with the other uh, students as well. Campus size, approximately, uh, I don't know if it's in campus size in terms of students or the, the area. Uh, the area, I don't know, it's a, it's a huge building. We have uh, six uh, different floors located by the river. So it's very nice. We also have a nice uh, place around uh, where you can sit, enjoy, have a coffee. We have a, a coffee place there. So the campus has a very nice size. And in terms of students, we have at any time, anywhere between 300 to 400 students uh, there on each uh, campus. Uh, and I'm saying each campus because we have other campuses uh, like München or Stuttgart. Uh, however, in those campuses, we only offer uh, German programs uh, for working adults in Germany. So those are not open for international students. Uh, but Berlin, that's more or less the, the size. Is there an age limit for bachelors and masters? Well, I. Honestly, there's no age limit, at least not the one that we give. Uh, I can give you what is the age average, right? So on average, the people that we have are around 22 to 27, 28 years old, right? On the MBA, there might be a little bit older. On the MBA and the MBE, usually you can have people between 25 to 35 year olds, right? Uh, every once in a while, we get, for example, especially for the MBA, people that have... Uh, that have 45 year olds, for example, maybe they already have a business or whatever, right? And then they, they're applying for the MBA. Uh, we, don't, we don't deny access based on age. So, I mean, if the, if the person is motivated for the right reasons, uh, we're happy to accept them. Uh, but we also want to make sure that they're gonna have a good experience. So for example, if you have someone that is, I don't know, 65 years and they want to do a bachelor, there are two issues. First, I don't think that person is going to be comfortable with a group of 19-year-olds 
And uh, second, it's going to be probably difficult to justify the visa. They, they will have a harder time to get the, the visa at the embassy if, if the age it's, doesn't match what the embassy would expect. Right? Um, does the university have 24-7 library? We have an online library. So, I mean, that's what everyone uses nowadays. Uh, so, I mean, you have some places where you can see to study, do some work projects, et cetera. But most of the students, they actually just look at the online library because also of the online magazines or the research you find nowadays on databases online. And that's, of course, available 24 seven. University accept gap in an education. I'm not sure what, if I understand correctly what the question means. I don't know if it's a gap year or, or not really. Uh, I don't know if you mean that if you're studying then that you can stop and then continue afterwards. You can have a one semester delay. For example, if you're studying your master degree, you did the first two semesters and then for whatever reason, uh, you have to go back to your country or whatever you want to uh, delay one semester, then th that's possible also due to sickness, right? But it's not the best experience to be honest. So it's better to do the, your program altogether. And um, if it's a gap year before the university, if you say, hey, I did my bachelor and then, then I did a gap year or did my high school and then a gap year, that has no impact because that's not something that it's part of the admission. So I don't know if I'm uh, understanding the question correctly, but if not, then feel free to clarify. Any other questions? Ah, gap year. Okay, yeah. So the gap year, uh, the gap year usually doesn't offer any any. It's not an accredited program, right? So uh, our main uh, our main uh, point of admission are accredited programs. So it's either the high school or the bachelor. Or the master degree, but if you did a gap year and then you went to California uh, to be a babysitter, or you went for some volunteering work somewhere, uh, you went to Colombia and Latin America uh, to do some volunteering, that really does not impact whatsoever the admission. So it doesn't help. It doesn't. Uh, it, it's not bad either. It's more. I mean. It shows that you have other interests, but uh, for the official, the legal admission, it has no impact whatsoever. Also, another message on my side, uh, if the sooner you apply or the, the sooner students apply, the better. Uh, don't wait until the last minute to have the, ah, I'm waiting for my photo to apply. No, I mean, send us the, the transcript of records, the, the degree, the English, and then we can start reviewing the application and then you can send afterwards the other documents, right? Uh, what we really need are the transcripts and we need the degree and then we can move forward. So the sooner you send it, the, the, the better because the faster we can be in contact with the student, we can be in contact with you. And then we can already tell you, yeah, there's a chance to accept the student or no. So that's, uh, that's an advantage. I think someone is raising their hands, but uh, they should just write the question here on the chat. Okay, Anand, I don't know if you have any other comments from your side or any other recommendations that can help. I think also it's important uh, that you guys know that uh, we have a team that it's located in several parts of the world. So we are always available there for you and your students. And uh, Anand is one of them who is uh, he's the country manager uh, for, for the Indian subcontinent. And uh, yeah, Anand. Yeah, I just want to bring to the notice to everybody. Uh, we are giving uh, for the April 2022 20, intake, uh, we are giving all the applicants, eligible students, we are giving 25% scholarship. So anybody is uh, interested for April intake, we have open for applications and all will be 
issued 25% scholarship for the applications coming in. And uh, somebody has asked about the application fee. We do not charge an application fee. We have online application link available. So you can do the application online. If uh, find any problem, you can let us know. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, Diko, I just forwarded you two of the queries uh, in the chat box. Can you please check? Yeah, I, I think I answered those before uh, regarding the students in Nigeria. Uh, as I mentioned, the okay. students in, in Nigeria, it's, I, we know Nigeria is a difficult country to get the visa from. Sometimes it takes six months, sometimes it takes more. We do not do visa appointments for the students. That's something that the agents and the students need to do themselves, right? Um, and the other question was if there are scholarships available. Yes, there are scholarships available. And like Anand said, every uh, student that is eligible to start in April will be granted a 25% scholarship. So now it's the time to come to Germany and, and do this. I, I think I'm going to also share just very briefly my screen again, because I wanted to sh uh, show you something. just to emphasize why now is the time to come to Germany, right? And if you're seeing my screen, this is something that, this is what I was telling you that happened last week. First, you know, as I already mentioned, we have an 18 month post-study work visa. So as soon as you graduate, you immediately get granted uh, the possibility to stay 18 months and work full-time in Germany. And this is in the middle of our uh, vice chancellor and minister of economic affairs, Robert Habeck. And last week, you see here on the 11th of January, he said Germany needs greater immigration to avoid labor shortages. And that's where he mentioned right now, they're missing 300,000 uh, workers, uh, qualified workers. And in the next months, they expect uh, to be missing 1 million qualified workers. So lots of opportunities. And the other news that happened last week, also on the 12th of January, is that Germany lowered the salary requirements for the EU blue card for engineering and computer science. So anyone that comes uh, to do a master's in engineering with us or the master of business engineering, they will have a huge advantage because instead of having to show afterwards uh, a salary of 56,000 euros, which was the usual, they, with only a salary of 44,000, they will already be able to apply for the European Union Blue Card, which gives you a lot of flexibility because then you can work all over the European Union. I think this is a fantastic advantage. And uh, any engineer that you have that wants to come to Germany and make it here, now is the time to do it. Okay. So I just wanted to share this uh, again with the, with the whole group. Uh, thank you so much, Diego, for this wonderful presentation. Yeah. Okay. So All each right. and every information has been covered. So now uh, I don't think they have any further doubts. Then also, obviously, I'm there. So I will definitely email you. I will be happy to send you the, the presentation. If you oh, can, sure. uh, uh, maybe you want to share with me an email here and on the chat, and then I send the presentation to that and uh, to that email. And then I will also send you one, the new flyer we have regarding the master in data and business analytics, right? So, uh, so, that, you, so that you can have it, All right? Uh, yes, you can share the presentation to my email ID. So I'm, we will follow to our okay. associates. Okay, Himali, thank you very much. Okay. Thank, thank you, you very so much, much everyone Diego. for your time and your participation. <laughs> and we're ready to welcome you and your students at our campus in Berlin, Germany. Thanks a lot. Thank you Have so much, Anand. Day. Thank you, Diego. Yeah. Have a nice day. Bye-bye. Thank you, Himali. Yeah, thank you. Bye-bye.